Hi, last week I found this cleaning robot in the dumpster. It was in a quite nice condition and had no visible damage on it. Although it was raining on that day and I suspected a water damage, I thought maybe I can fix it or maybe reprogram it. The brand is Severin and the model is called Chill. The problem is, of course, it's not working yet. Let's see if we can repair it or reverse engineer it. I found this vacuum robot in almost perfect condition, at least from the outside. Clearly, previous owners were not able to use this at all. It even had the original packaging plus the user manual. And some spare parts like brushes and also cleaning filter. Which is a nice catch. There wasn't any charging cord available with this, but still I think we can at least fix some of the issues. It looks like one of the, let's say, cheap cleaning robots. This is not marketed as one of the smartest cleaning robots, like it doesn't have any Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity, but I assume it should at least do some cleaning work. Still, it was funny to see a device which is designed to remove the garbage to become a garbage. People said that you would destroy this set, not join them! For troubleshooting any device, first I usually check simplest and easiest causes. This device didn't have any power cord with it. First I would like to find a way to charge this thing. Good thing about this thing is it is using a standard socket, so I can usually make up my own charger for this. And for that I made a charger using an old laptop charger. The voltage levels were matching, so all I did was cutting the existing DC laptop connector and replaced it with the same one that this Wookiee robot has. And let's see if this thing will work. Simply I'm just going to connect it here and device looks like getting charged and I checked the user manual by the way. If it is blinking it means that it is getting a charge. It seems like at least there is no issue with the charging circuitry. I will leave it for a few hours and come back later. I left it for charging a few hours and the LED is staying still. According to user manual, at least it means that the charging is completed. Maybe that's the old issue that this device has got. Let's try it. I guess all I have to do is just pressing the switch and wait for it. And nothing happens. I guess we need to check what's inside of this thing. First, I would like to check the batteries. Battery compartment is quite easy to access in this device, so you just need to turn it back and see underneath it. It is located under this cover. And the battery is easy to remove. If it's faulty, I think I can just buy a new one. Let's see the voltage levels after charging it up. I quickly grabbed my multimeter and I'm going to check positive and the negative terminals on the battery. Despite being charged for hours, the voltage level is way too low, even less than one voltage here. At least we have got a clue about the issue. For now, the battery is the part which I am suspecting the most. Good thing is, these batteries are quite standard. It is rated for 12.8 volt DC and worst case I can just buy a new replacement battery. Let's continue troubleshooting. If the battery was indeed dead, it was a little bit strange to see that it was even getting charged. So it is easy to remove the top cover and underneath here you have your dust collector. So quite easy to access. The design is pretty simple. Dust is coming from this gap and the motor here is creating the vacuum. Pretty straightforward. I would like to get an access to electronics and for that I would like to remove the top cover on this thing. And you can easily do that with a screwdriver. Since this step is pretty straightforward, I'm just gonna fast forward all the things. Removing the screws is all it takes. And after your repairs, you can easily put it back. Underneath the rubber band, we have two screws and I'm going to remove those as well. After this, removing the bumper is quite easy and I was able to remove the top cover quite easy as well. Now we have access to every electronics here. It will make troubleshooting easier. This small PCB is for connecting the charger. It is really a small one, nothing on it except the connectors and button. And here are the motors which helps it to move forward and backwards, left and right. 
and this small PCB is for the battery connector. Here are the two sensors for detecting the waste box, check if it is installed or not. In the middle it has a bump which sucks all the dust and such. And this is the motherboard, which is the main PCB, and it controls every sensors and motors on this vacuum robot. Let's take a look at the main PCB here. Even understanding of it helps you quite a bit on the troubleshooting. The PCB looks quite populated, however most of the things on it are really simple parts. This is the main microcontroller, which basically controls everything on this part. The microcontroller is from Elon Microelectronics, which is I have never heard before, and it is EM78P153K. Well, it is a 8-bit microcontroller, but it is one-time programmable, so you cannot really program it and install your own code on it to do some specific stuff. There is nothing really interesting about this microcontroller. I think it is as cheap as a microcontroller can go. One of the downside of this type of microcontroller is obviously you cannot change anything after you designed your firmware. Also in this microcontroller there is no peripherals or anything like UART or SPI and it doesn't even have ADC available. I assume this probably sold like 5 cents or whatever and it is one of the cheap Chinese microcontrollers that you can find. It's a shame for us makers that we cannot really reprogram it for let's say adding a new feature or just messing around with it. For a, let's say normal people it shouldn't matter I guess. But at least from the datasheet we can find the pinout of this microcontroller. If you want to do some more stuff with it, well you need to remove the chip from the PCB and maybe you can use any other microcontroller which fits the pinout or you can just solder pins of the another microcontroller to its place. On the PCB everything is connected with a connector which I think pretty nice for repairing it. In case something is wrong you can just remove and install another one. Apart from that there is nothing much interesting here, a few LEDs and H bridges and also charging circuitry and a buzzer here. And on the PCB we have one sensor here, it is used for the bumper and another of the same sensor here, which I don't know the function of it yet. I will put a higher risk picture down in the description later. I recharge it and the battery depleted it again, but there is definitely something wrong with the battery. But it is understandable, because it was laying under the rain for a while. I found this a little bit strange and wanted to check if the battery is entirely died out. But after the measurements, I think the battery has a little bit of juice left. You see the LED is still blinking, so it shows as if it is getting charged up. And also in the multimeter, I can see that the voltage levels are rising. Everything looks like how it is supposed to be. Maybe if I start right after charging a bit, I can see some movement on the wheels. While it's charging, let's talk about some design choices that they took. I checked online and this robot is sold around like 100 euros. To be able to do that, they tried to make everything cheap and also repairable. You can repair everything on this vacuum robot yourself, which I really liked. It is good for the company to make these things repairable and also that means it's good for the consumers as well. The win-win situation. For example, if one of the wheel motors got broken, they can be easily replaced with a screwdriver. It is also same for the vacuum pump, because this type of components have a lifetime and eventually they will break. All you need to do is removing the screws. It is obvious that why maintainability is beneficial for the consumers. They can use the device as long as they want, even if one of the components got broken, they can even replace it themselves with the basic skills. But not only that, it is more beneficial for the companies as well. They can make their products modular like this one. For example, wheels can be reused on the next generation of the models as well. And there is a big cost difference between manufacturing 1000 units and 100,000 units. Everything will be way cheaper. That way, they can reduce the repair costs during the maintenance. Not only because of being able to order cheap parts, but also being able to train their service team faster. And in some cases, some consumers might even try to fix it themselves. All these will create more consumer satisfaction. Even though they were penny pinching in this vacuum robot, 
I would give them high points from maintainability standpoint. I checked everything that I could and still I can't find the root cause of the issue. The voltage levels are looking fine. The LEDs are responding to the charging states. So that means microcontroller is working as it is supposed to be. There is definitely something else which prevents it from working. Although there is something wrong with the battery, I think that's not the only issue here. At least I should be able to see some movement. I will probably replace the battery with a new one, but let's continue further. My next guess is the sensors on this device. One of them is on the right and also we have another one on the left and one in the front, which is not visible here. So in case this robot moves to on stairs or something, it will stop working and return and turn to right or left and continue its operation. They all have some sort of sensitivity setting here, but probably that's not the case. Maybe they have sensors on the wheels as well. Now in case you raise it with your hands, it stops working. I didn't see anything on the motors, but definitely they have springs. So maybe that might be the issue. In case you are wondering, there is no electrical component on the front cover. I am going to check the sensors next and see if something is wrong with those. Maybe there is a simple test that I can conclude. Come to think of it, there is one sensor which I did not understand the reason why it exists. It is the same one which is connected to the bumper. Here is a PCB from a mouse. The sensor on the walking robot is more or less works like ones which are commonly found on the mouses. There is an LED and also there is a light sensor. If something goes in between, it triggers a signal. The shape is a little bit different, but it works more or less the same. So there might be only one reason why they have another sensor like this on the top of the PCB. I guess it's for detecting the top cover if it is installed or not. To eliminate this from the troubleshooting equation, I cut a small packaging form like this one and on the purpose is that eliminate the light transfer. So if I just stick it in here, I think it will just work. I would like to try starting it before going any further. And right away LED started lighting up with a different pattern. I guess we are onto something here. Well, that was easy. I wasn't really hoping to solve the issue now, to be honest. I guess top plastic cover was not properly blocking the emitted light on the sensor. I am able to solve it with no cost at all, apart from the time that I spent to fix it, of course. And while we are at it, let's do a quick test for the other sensor. The bumper sensor is looking fine, and I'm not sure if the full sensor as well is not falling from the back. I decided to see how it works by installing the garbage collector. And for that I picked up the hardest place for a working robot to work. Usually most of them do not work properly in the chair legs. And as you can see, it's not that smart, however mostly it takes the job done. I also have a roommate at home and it was the cleaning day. And instead of the bar, I decided to try this one to see if it can pick up the dust from the floor. And mostly it works okay for that as well. And remember, this is a working robot that we can buy it down like 100 euros, which I think it is fair. Also, like any other working robot, it can only do obstacles just like that. However, sometimes it does dumb things like this one and gets stuck on the back of the air legs. Sometimes it fixes itself, like the way it did, but sometimes it stuck there, like forever. I wouldn't recommend this one in case you have lots of chairs in your home. Otherwise, it works okay. I was thinking about uploading my own code after fixing it, even before beginning to the troubleshooting. However, the microcontroller on this walking robot is only one time programmable. So I was thinking about removing it and instead soldering something like this deep socket in its place and simply control it with something else. Something like maybe Arduino Uno or something. It's not the most elegant solution but probably the easiest way. And then I thought about maybe I can find another microcontroller which has a similar pinout as the one which is on the vacuum robot and solder it in its place. It will be quite nice. The only downside of this solution is you have a very limited number of options for your microcontroller selection. As far as I remember, there were some PIC MCUs with a similar pinout, but I need to check. Another option would be using ESP8266 microcontroller like Node MCU. And the good thing is we can add Wi-Fi functionality on it and we can solder the deep socket on the PCB. Then we can just attach the cables on the deep socket. So it will be a little bit flexible. 
However, I'm not sure if we really want a Wi-Fi functionality on this device. It might be nice to include it in the home assistant, for example, but it would be not really energy efficient if we just try to control it like a toy device or something. Because essentially this is a power operated device. Also, Node MCU does not have enough pins to control every functionality on it. But I think we can get away if we don't use some of the LEDs, for example. We can get away from this issue by using ESP32 boards, which has enough pins, and on top of that, you can also use the Bluetooth functionality. It might be fun to control your vacuum robot with your phone, like an RC car. But again, ESP32s are not really power efficient as well. So if we decide to not use the Wi-Fi functionality, I think Nordic Semiconductor microcontrollers, like for example NRF52 series, would be pretty good for this solution. Please share what you think down in the description, especially about the microcontroller selection, so I can continue with my next steps. Or if you think it's not really fun to work on these things at all, just let me know as well, so I can just skip everything and call it a day. And like always, if you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and see you next time.